Get ready for a shock to your system as temperatures plunge tonight for the first freeze of the season and this new year. Hello again and happy new year. I'm Tom Abrams. We're going from record heat to temperatures in the 30s. Chief Meteorologist Travis Herzog joins us on this January 1st with what we can expect tonight. Travis. Tom, a remarkable drop in temperatures is on the way. Earlier we had 85 degrees in Houston, which sets a record for the entire month of January. Galveston, you were at 81, but look what is coming down the plains through the state of Texas. Dallas is now at 35 degrees. It is 10 degrees in Amarillo with sub-zero wind chill factors across the Texas panhandle. Locally, we've had a little bit of a, a dry front try to blow in. That spiked the temperature into the mid 80s. As we go through the evening, we will stay on the mild side of the front. Nine o'clock, that front is pushed through Brenham College Station, Huntsville. Conroe's at 66, Tomball's at 72. It's still in the low 70s from Houston to Galveston. But after midnight, the cold air will come surging through Houston down to the upper Texas coastline. Seven o'clock in the morning, that freeze line is going to cut right through Harris County. Right now, Harris County is not included in the freeze warning, but I'm telling you from spring to Cypress to Katy, even all the way as far west as Columbus, get ready for a freeze to settle in tonight and then a more widespread freeze on the way tomorrow night. All the details coming up in your full forecast. All right, Travis, thank you. Well, you still do have time to protect your home before the temperatures plunge. That means wrapping any exposed piping, whether it's made of plastic, copper or any other material. Most of us won't be experiencing a hard freeze, as Travis mentioned, so the pipes inside your home should be fine. But don't forget to shut off the valve and drain water from your sprinkler system and cover any plants sensitive to cold temperatures with a breathable fabric. The Houston SPCA reminds you to bring your pet indoors tonight. If you have a pet which you cannot bring inside, keep it in an enclosed dry structure with blankets. The SPCA says cars can act as a refrigerator in the cold, so never leave your dog or cat alone in a car and cats can sleep under hoods of cars to stay warm. So before you start your car, bang loudly on the hood to give them a chance to escape. Three people were killed and four injured in a crash early this morning in West Harris County. Officials tell ABC 13 at least one of the drivers did show signs of being intoxicated. ABC 13's Courtney Carpenter joins us live on this Saturday near where that accident happened. She has the latest information tonight. Courtney. Now, Tom, this really is a sad situation. The accident happened right here at the corner of Barker Cypress and Barker's Branch. And one of the family members of a woman who was injured in the crash says the group was just on their way home from counting down to the new year when it all happened. A devastating way to start the new year as three people were killed and four others were injured as a minivan and SUV collided just after one o'clock this morning in West Harris County. So they went to cow down and after that they come home. And uh, I think they turned into rock my mother-in-law, then that's what happened. This man did not want to be identified, but told us his 77-year-old mother-in-law was seriously injured in the crash. He says she's still in ICU, has a broken leg, internal bleeding, and a head injury. Yeah, Toya Sienna failed to yield the right of way. Officials say the 70-year-old driver of the minivan failed to yield the right of way, and three of the van's five passengers were not wearing a seatbelt when the crash happened. Two of them were ejected and were dead when deputies arrived. A third passenger later died at the hospital. As of right now, the Sienna is at fault for this crash, though, but it is being reconstructed, determined if speed may play a factor and also being intoxicated as well. So charges may be upgraded in the future from DWI to intoxicated manslaughter. For this man, it's a horrible way to start the new year after a tough 2021. We lost a lot of family members this year. My mom, my dad, and my niece said one week. Now, we still don't know the names of the victims. Now, the minivan that was involved in the crash was registered to an adult daycare senior citizen activity center over on Wilcrest Drive, about 20 minutes away. We did reach out to the owner of that facility. So far, we have not heard back. Now, coming up at 10 o'clock, we hear from three women who were in a backyard just across the road. They heard the crash and came over to help the victims. Their story coming up tonight. Reporting live in West Harris County, Courtney Carpenter, ABC 13 Eyewitness News. Courtney, thank you. An explosion of violence claimed the lives of at least 474 people in Houston this last year. That's an 18% increase from 2020, and it only took two hours into the new year for the city to record its first murder of 2022. A young mother of three shot and killed after police say her boyfriend was attacked as they were leaving a bar and lounge in southwest Houston. 
ABC 13 reporter Roxy Bustamante joins us live now with the latest on this ongoing investigation. Roxy. Houston police are actively looking for the two suspects that are connected in this deadly shooting. Now, I did talk to the victim's family and friends, and they are heartbroken, and they simply just want answers. There's at least possibly between 15 to plus 20 rounds that were fired here at the location. In southwest Houston, just after 2 a.m. New Year's Day, Houston police say 24-year-old Italia McGregor and her boyfriend were leaving 5-9 Bar and Hookah Lounge when three to four men attacked McGregor's boyfriend. Investigators say several people jumped in trying to help the man. That's when multiple people pulled out guns and started shooting in different directions. McGregor was hit and killed. Her boyfriend and another man were also shot and are expected to survive. A family member tells me 24 year old Italia McGregor was loved by many. She leaves behind three children, including a two month old baby. Police say surveillance video from the business captured the fight in the parking lot. These are pictures of the two suspects who police say took off in a white Dodge Charger. Anyone with information is asked to call Houston Crime Stoppers and you can receive a reward up to $5,000. And at this point, we don't know the motive, um, what the argument about. At this point, we don't believe the argument or anything took place inside of the business. Um, what we do know is there are clear cameras. Um, we are still currently reviewing the video footage, and it does show, like I said, as soon as the complainant and his girlfriend step out, he is attacked by at least three to four males. Roxy Bustamante, ABC 13 Eyewitness News. Turning now to the pandemic, some Houstonians spent the first day of 2022 getting tested for COVID. We saw lines of cars driving up to the mega testing site in Lot C at Minute Maid Park. The site's open from 8 in the morning to 5 in the evening, Monday through Saturday. Appointments are required. You can schedule one at mycovidappointment.com. Galena Park ISD is changing its free COVID testing for students and staff. Appointments are now required for the test at the administration building on Wood Forest. You can, or in the Wood Forest building rather, you can go to the district website or Twitter for a link to make an appointment. It, Spring ISD says it is keeping its mask mandate in place because of the spike in COVID cases. Students and staff should expect to cover their faces when they return to class Tuesday. HISD says its mask mandate will also remain in place. Well, one place you don't want to get tested is the emergency room. Doctors saying this weekend they're seeing people show up for COVID tests, even though the ER is really only for emergencies. It's just putting a burden on an already inundated uh, system. But two, let's assume that the person who's showing up actually does have COVID. Now you're putting other people in the emergency room waiting area and healthcare staff at risk of being exposed to COVID. The head of the Harris Health System says if you have symptoms of COVID, assume you have it and isolate. Even if it's not COVID and is the flu or another seasonal illness, you still shouldn't be around other people. And if you don't have COVID, you might actually expose yourself to the illness with a non-emergency visit to the ER.